Hey, this is Corey Glenn. I want to show a quick trick that I uh, did on a recent case that I thought might be helpful. Uh, so what we have here is this is a patient who's already a dentalist and they're going to be going to a hybrid. And so when we, you know, build in the 14, 15 millimeters of prosthetic space, the implants needed to basically go at this level. And since that was a good, you know, seven, eight millimeters of bone reduction, to me that indicates a bone reduction guide. And so that's what you're looking at right here is the bone reduction guide. Now you'll notice I do have a lingual on this. Sometimes I'll do a lingual on my reduction guides, other times not. If I'm doing them in resin, you know, it tends to, to help and make a much stiffer overall guide that you don't have to worry about breaking if you will incorporate it. So I do have a lingual to this reduction guide. It doesn't go excessively deep or anything like that. Um, and then just to make sense of what you're seeing right here, you know, there's there's nothing to initially seat this guide and so I like to build in these little hooks um, which are going to be occlusal stops they're going to seat on the bone and once you know this is seated you've got basically five points of contact so you ought to be able to get a really good definitive seating position and once it's down in position you can drill the pinholes uh, insert your pins and once all three pins are in you can go ahead and start reduction and once you do start the reduction you just basically buzz right through these little stops those fall away and then you can just bring your reduction down to the level of the reduction guide so that's just to make sense of what you're seeing in this case this is why the guide is designed this way now having said that the one of the concerns sometimes when you have um, you know a decent amount of bone reduction to do is that you know the patient's lingual tissue uh, it, it can kind of flop over and get in the way of your burr and you know there's a lot of stuff in the floor of the mouth that you don't want to wrap up in a burr and so you have to be really careful and keep your assistant on uh, retracting that and then secondarily the tongue can wander up there again it can just make visibility difficult and it just gets in your way you know you can wrap that up in the burr too so What's a quick and easy way that we could build in some sort of uh, retraction for that lingual tissue and the tongue? And, you know, I've done this on occasion. This is just a simple, simple way that you can do this. So I'm going to get, I'm, I'm in Mesh Mixer right now. This uh, guide's and all been designed previously in Blue Sky. But I'm going to get, uh, you know, like a relatively small spot size, maybe like 25 or so. And what I'm going to do is just build in a, uh, an area on the lingual of this guide that is going to be used for retracting the tissue. And so I don't want to go all the way to this ledge right here because that ledge is my visual indicator of, hey, here's where the reduction stops. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to go excessively deep on my lingual reduction for such a case. And so I'm leaving a lip of that undisturbed. But I'm basically going around this and selecting kind of the, uh, the inside edge, the lingual edge there. And then we can just taper this up maybe right there. Okay, so we've selected all this. I'll smooth the border of that. That's uh, the hotkey is B. And now I'm going to push T for transform. And what I can do is just pull straight up on that. You know, I'll get it straight up and down where it's somewhat symmetrical and we can basically create a wall that will retract that tongue and keep it out of our surgical site okay if you wanted to bring it more anteriorly you can but you know then you can kind of create a ledge that's harder to get under uh, as you're doing your reduction with the big burr um, you know i want it mostly straight up and down maybe just a little slanting forward you don't want to you know take this thing way back here and now you've got you know nowhere for the tongue to go and the patient feels like they're suffocated so I'll control Z that we'll go with something about like this okay and then you could go ahead and just print this and grind it to whatever contour you want or if you'd rather just go ahead from the start and you know get something a little bit uh, more finished looking that doesn't require any post-processing um, we could just now select that area and we could just do a plane cut on the area that we've got selected. All right, so let's just do that. I'll double click here. I've got all of that area that I've extruded up, selected. And now I'm going to go to edit and plane cut. 
And so very similar to the other plane cut tool, it's going to, to just do a plane cut, but the difference with this one is it will only apply it to what's been selected. So you can see here, I, I would be cutting through my actual reduction guide here, but since I've done it through uh, the selection menu, it's only going to apply that plane cut to whatever was selected. All right, and now we can bring this down where it's not going to be so bulky to fit in the mouth. You don't have to have a ton of uh, retraction here. Um, you're just mainly trying to keep it out of your surgical site. So just that amount right there is still going to be a relatively low profile guide, but that's going to kind of be a wall that the, the lingual tissue and the, the tongue bump into and basically stay behind. So it's going to be a lot safer during the uh, bone reduction portion, uh, not having to worry about wrapping their tongue or the tissue up in your burr. Plus it's just easier for me. You know, it's just a simple method to keep everything retracted and to be able to do my bone reduction quicker uh, without having those worries. So anyway, simple video, but hopefully you find that helpful. Thanks.